Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. I'm not sure what time of day you're watching this. If you're watching this live with me right now, you're watching it in the evening. Or, you know what? Let me scratch that because you could be watching it anywhere in the world, which I'm hoping you are. It would be dope if we start developing a viewership, a community of people who will watch these videos live with me from around the world on all six continents. I don't expect to pe people to be watching from Antarctica, but it would be dope, though. It would be dope. But at least six continents. Thank you guys so much for watching. Before we go any further, do me a favor. Hit the like button. It lets YouTube know that this may be a video worth sharing, and it will allow other people who are into this kind of content to pick up the video through the YouTube algorithm. And if you're not joined to the, or you're not part of the Harrison Extended family through subscription, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell notification so it will let you know when I go live, like I'm doing right now, or when I upload new videos to the channel, which I usually do throughout the week. So today we have a good one. But this is one of those topics that aren't really popular, right? It's not really one of those topics that people are going to be like, yo, I want to hear this because it's about drama. Nope. No drama. We, we don't do that here. No drama today. Today, we're talking about how couples can strengthen their marriage when contempt grows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> They say familiarity breeds contempt. And in many cases, it does. When you get used to somebody, it's hard for you to, to give the utmost respect to them in all areas. Which is why when people advance in a career, and they at one point was on the same level as their friends and colleagues, and now they become supervisor, those Previous friends and colleagues are now looking at this new supervisor with contempt, which is why I believe at least in the New York City um, uh, Police Department, right? Why am I so far over? Why is it so? Hold on one second. Let me just see if I can. Oh, there we go. Much better. Now you see all the, the junk in the background. All right. So at least in the New York City Depo uh, Police Department, I believe once you get promoted, you have to go to a different precinct because familiarity breeds contempt that can happen in marriage as well you have been together for so long you've allowed the love to grow cold and now you guys are looking at each other with contempt now it's like uh yeah i don't really look at you the same anymore i i, I see who you are now i i i I'm able to really know who you are and i've gotten to know you and some cases i don't really you know i don't really like who you are right so they were talking about how contempt is the one of the key tellers of a failed marriage. Contempt is one of those things that, if not checked, if not fixed, will most likely lead to divorce. Now, you've heard this before. God doesn't like divorce. If you've watched the channel for any length of time, you know that. I am a divorcee. I am remarried, but I am a divorcee. Now, the reason why I got divorced is, truth be told, is, was beyond my control. There was nothing I can do about it. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm a divorcee. And here's the thing, though. Here's one of the, the crazy things about me being a divorcee. I don't really support divorce, even though I was the one who had to initiate it. I don't really support divorce. I'm not like a, a guy that tell people to get a divorce. You, you work it out if you can. But, you know, God doesn't like it. It's not in God's plan. What's going on, Chavis? Glad you were here. It's not in God's plan for people to get married and then divorce. And one of the things that people fail to do, which I'm starting to see people are not rushing into marriage as they used to, is that they don't vet properly. And when they don't vet properly, they marry the wrong person. And when they marry the wrong person, they realize after a couple of years, wow, I think I married the wrong person. I need to get out of this situation. And then they get a divorce. Spend time vetting the person while you're in the dating phase so that you know for sure this is the person that is good for you and that you are good for them, that you guys are compatible. Okay? But one of the things that contributes to the contempt is the fact that you believe that you chose wrong. 
And when you believe you chose wrong, you don't look at your spouse the same way. And um, it's, a, it's a sad thing because marriage is the bedrock of every successful community. Every successful civilization has marriage as the bedrock. If you look, look, look at communities that are broken down, one thing that you'll find in most broken down communities, no marriages. You'll have single parents, but no marriages. Marriage is the bedrock. Why? Because that's, that is the first thing God established between man and woman. That was the, 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 the initial, initial response to family in the Bible. The initial response was marriage. Out of marriage comes family. Out of family comes communities. Out of communities come strong, you know, civilizations. And if you see, we're going backwards. We're going backwards. People are now getting divorced over minuscule things like irreconcilable differences. Irreconcilable differences? Imagine going to the, the, the king of all kings, the lord of all laws, the creator of all the universe, the God, the God who created marriage and saying, God, I want out of this marriage because of irreconcilable differences. And here's the stupid part of all of this. The spouse who makes less will get alimony in most states because of irreconcilable differences. You don't even have to cheat on your spouse or do anything. Just like, you know what? We don't feel like being married anymore. And the person who initiates divorce because they don't feel like being married anymore may earn less than you. And they don't want you anymore, but they still want your money. The hypocrisy is real. The hypocrisy is real. And it's sad. It's sad. And that's one of the things that, that, that shows how contempt can creep its ugly head into your marriages. Instead of looking at your spouse as a partner, as a worthy partner, you're either looking at them as competition, you're looking at them as less than, all right? This past week, Steve Harvey, and I don't play anything from Steve Harvey because they tend to copyright <laughs> over there in Steve Harvey Industries or whatever. But he, I don't agree with everything that Steve Harvey says, but I, I, I support his marriage. I do. He, he talked about how in 2006, when he first started to date Marjorie, he didn't have anything. He had just lost his radio show. He just lost the TV show, you know, the Steve Harvey show. So he wasn't making any money and he was trying to get back. And in 2007, Marjorie said, I, I really want to be married to you. And he was in 2006, they wanted to get married. 2007, either one. He said, he said, I'm not ready. I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I can't, you know, you know, we, I got, I got to, I got to rebuild all this. And her response was to him, at least what he says is, this is, this is, this is key. I will build it with you. We'll build it together. All right. It's difficult, and this is for the men out there. Listen to me carefully, okay? When you vet, you want to find somebody that has that kind of mindset. Regardless of all these bozo females out there talking about, I don't want to build a man, okay? That women who say, I don't want to build a man, don't understand their biblical role in a marriage. Women who talk about they want a man already established don't understand their biblical role. They're the ones who will probably be like, you know, I want that soft life. I want a man to give me a soft life. You know what the Bible says? That you are his helpmate. You know what Proverbs 31 shows? What it expresses? A woman, <coughs> a wife, right? Who is worthy? The, the woman who's a prize, who's not looking for a soft life, but is adding to the family, adding to her husband, building with him. But back to you, gentlemen. You're not doing a good job vetting women. So there's contempt festering in your marriages because we did not do or you did not do a good job vetting your spouse. She was beautiful, bad. You know, she had her, her, her body ratio. Her body ratio was superb. You, you, you loved everything about her physically. But never consider her character and what really makes a woman a good wife. So you marry her, overlooking the women 
who wanted your attention, who would have made you a good wife. A woman who you were not, because here's the thing, men grow contempt for pretty women a lot faster than they do a woman with character. They do. They do. Just like women, right, will grow contempt for a man who is rich and that's all he has faster than he would, she would a man who has good character. What's going on, Desan? Glad you are here. That's 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 what it's about. And and we, we really don't want to have these kind of productive conversations because it's not talking about men and women, you guys gotta hate each other. No. Let's we're trying to avoid that. We're trying to avoid that here on Harrison Family Values. We want married, we want you guys to get married and have amazing marriages. But some of the choices you make in choosing has planted that seed of contempt, causing it to grow and choke up your marriage. Chokes it up. I want to show you guys a video from Jordan Peterson. You know, I've been watching Jordan Peterson a lot on this channel. All right. Uh, some people have mixed feelings about Jordan Peterson. I, I, I tend to like his take on a lot of things. I do. But let's take a listen to what Jordan Peterson says. And do me a favor, put a one in the chat if you're watching live to let me know you are able to hear this clearly. There's a good predictor of a broken marriage for those of you who are listening. If you're a marriage counselor and you're talking to a couple and while they're talking, one of them or the other or both rolls their eyes, there's an extremely high probability that they're going to get divorced mm. because that eye rolling is a marker of contempt. Mm. And the worst emotion you can feel in relationship to someone else isn't fear, it's contempt. Yeah, man. Extremely deep. Contempt. It's that, it's that feeling like you just, it's, it's, it's a feeling of apathy, like, you know, or you can't stand this person's guts. Contempt looks like your, you, your spouse is eating and the way they chew just irks you. Contempt looks like your spouse is, is battling something and they really need support and you're looking at them like, oh, look how weak and, 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 pitiful, and pitiful this person is. That's what contempt looks like. In a marriage, it should be the very opposite. Which is why Jordan Peterson says that it's an indicator, right? Like a eye rolling is an indicator for contempt, which most likely leads to divorce. Something as small as an eye roll. Y'all may think it's ins insignificant, but it shows a level of disrespect and contempt. Not content, but contempt. And we should be content in our marriages. Instead, we're finding contempt for our spouses. Back to you. So, you're looking at your spouse with contempt. And it's indicating that your marriage isn't going to work out. And you may want it to work out. But that eye rolling, that it shows that you don't really care. Or that your spouse doesn't really care. And once that happens, it's difficult for there to be any growth in the marriage. Once contempt sets in, and if it's not cut at the root, all it's going to do is tear the marriage apart. All it does is tear the marriage apart. Jordan Peterson brought up a great, great, great point. Now, I, I support, and you, as you know, I support couples going to, to marry, marriage therapy or, or marriage counseling or going to a marriage coach, okay? Um, you guys know I have a degree back here in marriage and family counseling, counseling, a master's degree. I support it. I have a, a service I give to couples where I coach them on their marriage and give them marriage counseling. It's, it's something that I'm passionate about and I don't charge a whole lot. And if you are interested, shameless plug, you can go to coachingbydre.com and book a session with me as a couple or as an individual, but as a couple and see what we can do to help eliminate contempt in your marriage. But it happens. It happens. It's a sad truth. And I, I don't want to see marriages go down that route, but it does. 
It does. Disrespect. You know what else adds to contempt? People's, let me take this off. People's dependency on social media. Because you're constantly comparing your relationship to others. Others who carefully curate what they post on the internet to make you think that they have the perfect relationship. Which is why a couple of years ago, what was huge was the, the whole um, couples goals, hashtag couples goals, relationship goals. Everybody, with, you don't see that much anymore now, right? That's because the red pill and the, the modern feminism movement took over and nobody wants to be couples goals because then you look like you're simping or you caping for your husband or man, right? So uh, it died down. So it was a good run, but it wasn't an a, a authentic, genuine run. People were putting stuff on social media so that they can get views and clicks. Nothing real. Everything was so polished and curated. And, you know, they're not they're not putting the fact that they're just lounging together, no makeup and 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 beard all scruffed up watching Netflix and cuddle. No, they're not doing that. They, they, they're they hiring makeup artists. They're hiring. Um, uh, um, what's, uh, uh, what's it? Uh, Kevin Samuels was that. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, a stylist and all that, right? Do uh, they're hiring all these things, buying outfits, and then going out there and having uh, photographers shoot these professional photos shoots with them and then posting them on Instagram, wanting couples to think that they are the it couple hashtag couples goals. We all need therapy from time to time. We all need a marriage tune up. That's one of the things that can help, and I'm I'm, I'm getting a little ahead on myself. That's one of the things that can help in eliminating contempt in your marriage, in your relationships. Like imagine having to go to bed with somebody that you know don't like you. There are things that you can do about that. There are things that you can do about that. I'm going to show you guys another video. Uh, it's another Jordan Peterson video, but um, it's a, a like a graphic video. All right, check this out. I was reading a Gottman study the other day on marital stability. Gottman has done some really good analysis now, of yeah. Now Gottman has uh, Gottman's Gottman's work on relationships, particularly marriage, is top notch. So if you ever want to get like good books, go on Amazon and and um, search Gottman and great great stuff. Couples behavior. He has set up a lab that's basically a bed and breakfast. And he brings couples in there for a weekend and he wires them up physiologically and monitors their reactivity. And so what he's, he can predict whether a couple's going to divorce with 95, 94% accuracy. That's crazy. To be able to predict with 94% accuracy if a couple's going to get divorced. Like, impressive. So what has he found? He's found two categories. So there's science in this. There's science in this. So don't, don't think that this is just like people who are getting the degrees in marriage and family counseling is just some fluff degree. There's science behind this. It works. Stories of he's, he's identified two phenomena that are very much worth knowing. Listen. The first is that the couples who are going to get divorced, they come into the bed and breakfast and they speak with each other quite calmly. But it's more walking on eggs calm. And while they're speaking with each other calmly, their physiology is like they're very aroused. And so, so they're sort of aroused like someone who's facing a predator. So you might. Yeah, so it's not like aroused, like a good thing. It's like the fight, uh, the fight or flight type of response to it's that kind of arousal. Think of an unhappy couple as predator and prey to each other. Mm. And so the words are there mostly to stop predatory activity, not to actually communicate it. So they're, they're talking softly and calmly with each other so that they don't bring out the beast in the other person. Anything. It's just to keep the surface calm. Mm. So then you might think, well, what's under the surface? And what's under the surface? So Freud would say, it's what's under the surface is unconscious. And But you can say, well, what's under the surface is one of these hierarchies that's all banged up and twisted and, and, and not in reasonable shape. Mm. And so people don't want to open the door to that. Mm. So, but they do. This is a Freudian slip. So let's say this is, goes to the second part of Gottman's observations. So the woman goes over to the window and she says, oh, look, there's a cardinal outside. You know, a cardinal is that bright red bird. That now, 
identify men identify which one is you look at this next part and identify which one is you okay watch this kind of cool looking you know or how you usually respond to your wife kind of a trivial thing in some sense but by the same token it's like it's a little positive thing and you know 20 of them in a day is a good thing okay so then the uh, the partner the husband in this example has a two by two matrix of choices one is who the hell cares about your stupid bird is that okay, you so that's one the second one is <sighs> then you go over and look at the bird right is that you? and the, the third one is you don't make the contempt noise but you act it out and the fourth one is mm. you go over there like a civilized human being and you know and that you're interacting with someone that you care for and you take a look at the damn bird and you're happy about it and it, and that's as truthful and real as you can manage yeah. okay, which one so are you the which one are we <sighs> option that's a freudian slip right because what it says there's a whole monster underneath that and the monster is all the disorganization in this entire structure it's like the <sighs> might be we have been tormenting each other about various things for the last 10 years and none of them are resolved and i'm not very happy about you for so many reasons i can't even remember all of them and this is to say don't ignore the size if you are the one sighing or if your spouse is the one sighing do not ignore the size because it's telling it's telling and ignoring the size will help inch you closer and closer and closer to a failed marriage and a divorce and I'm, I can't enumerate them right now because that would take forever and maybe we would have a huge fight. But by the same token, I'm not going to come over there and make you happy with your stupid bird. Mm. And I'm going to indicate that subtly so you can't call me a son of a bitch because I'm just sighing and that's what... Danger. I'll say if you do ask me, but I'm going to load all that up and I'm going to deliver it to you. Mm. And what's going to happen to you is because you're smart is your heart rate's going to go way up like you're being attacked. And the reason for that is you, you are. are. Mm -hmm. So what the good couples do, the couples that, you know, stay together is now they respond this. to each other's bids. He calls them bids. And so if one person wants to share. So they respond to each other's bids. They do for each other. And what happens is if there's a married couple where one person is doing more bids then the other person, how it would look like is if uh, one spouse is expecting their their spouse to do all these things, but when that other spouse asks them to do anything, they get an attitude. This is what it creates. It creates contempt. It creates this attitude of, you know, I, I don't want to do anything for you because when was the last time you done anything for me? We got to be careful of that. We do, we, we do each other's bidding, right? Bids. Out of love. Out of wanting to see the other person happy and you need to ask yourself this husbands wives do you get joy and happiness out of seeing your spouse happy if you don't book a session with me today coaching by dre.com coaching by dre.com book a session with me today and we can process together why you don't feel happy when your spouse is experiencing joy OK, we because that there has to be worked out, especially if you're not looking to have a divorce or some little trivial daily positive thing with the other. The other, you know, isn't carrying around a bloody cartload of resentment mm. and is able to respond to that in a positive way. And that way, the general interactions between the couple stay positive. But that's also because they've worked this out. Now, you know, it's got to be because they work it out, because the couples who are physiologically reactive to each other. They're communicating, but there's yeah. all sorts of horror underneath the surface. Yeah. And we're trying to figure out, well, what is it that's underneath the surface? What's the structure of the unconscious? Well, that's the structure of the unconscious. And mm -hmm. it's either well-structured and functional and mutually agreed upon and as explicit as possible, or it's this constantly. He's, he's doing this like, Combating each other, like, you know, combating each other, which happens a lot in marriages, which happens a lot in marriages. Marriages tend to have um, couples who are just combating each other instead of doing each other's bidding 
as if as as Gottman would put it. Instead of doing that, they're fighting each other. And here's the thing: some of us will go into marriage expecting that it's the other person's responsibility to simply do what we want, and we don't have to do anything. Hashtag soft life. <laughs> I've asked the sisters from Soft Life in Christ to do an interview and do a conversation so I can get more of an understanding. They haven't responded. And I, I, I don't see that whole soft life in Christ in the Bible at all. I really don't. It's a secular concept that is rooted in extreme modern feminism where the woman does nothing and the husband does everything. And it's not biblical. It's not at all. Unless somebody can show me how it's a biblical concept, I'll succeed. But it doesn't, it doesn't, I, I, I've done some, I just don't see it. Well, if that's the case, Dre, why bother? If you're married and there's no communication, you're not married, bro. Can't get a weekend therapy session if you're not talking and don't, and uh, don't be. Now, here's the thing about that, though. Um, I, I, I agree with you. I do agree with you, but it doesn't have to stop it like that. It, that doesn't have to be the end all, you know, to the relationship. It can improve. There's been countless success stories, excuse me, of couples where one of the spouses don't want to be involved. And throughout the processing, a breakthrough happens and they were able to find their breakthrough, get their healing in the marriage and start developing and practicing the skills that they learned in counseling to have a successful marriage. It can happen if you are coupled with the right marriage counselor, because I say this on my channel before, some counselors want you dependent on them so that they can keep your money coming as if it's residual income. I, I don't look at counseling that way. I look at counseling as a, a person who is trained, who has the heart and is a follower of God, that will give you the skills needed so that you can move forward in your marriage to have a successful marriage, right? Practice in your marriage, not keep you dependent on an, on a human being to have a good marriage. But, um, but there are now I'm a realist. Some, some spouses will come into a counseling session, not wanting to do anything, not wanting to, sometimes there's nothing you can do about that, but you can try. I would rather try and fail then say, you know what? This is never going to go anywhere. I'm not even going to waste my time. I'd rather try and fail, all right? Because if I try, there's a chance of success. You know what I'm saying, bro? Yeah. So, but with that being said, I wanted to go over a couple of things with you guys. Some contributions to what could bring upon contempt in your marriage. This is like when the love is gone and you cannot stand your spouse. You can't even stand the sight of them. It's, it's like one of those things where it's like, you know, why are they here? <laughs> right? Or you're rolling your eyes if they're calling your name. Or um, So some contributions that you need to understand. And this is some of these things are internal. Stress. Are you stressed out? Could it be that you're working a job that's so stressful that it's pouring in, that same stress is pouring into your marriage? And... Maybe you feel like you're not getting the rest that you want at home. But truth be told, you have responsibilities at home as well, right? So if you have responsibilities at home, don't think that you can just come home and do absolutely nothing. There's work that needs to be done at home also. So sometimes, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, sometimes, and this is not the, a popular opinion, you may have to change occupations and find a job that would not be so stressful. Money isn't everything. Unless you have a spouse who all they care about is money and they want this soft life and they expect you to fund their lavish lifestyle. But if you marry them, you probably did a bad job vetting them in the first place. But a pr improvement is a two-way street. Man, I happen to agree with you about the counseling. One must have a strong support group. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and again, it has to be a two-way street. It's very difficult for... Uh, one couple to do one, one person and the couple to do everything. However, I am going to give you guys a scripture that sort of encourages uh, not to leave your spouse for, you know, just things and just try to hang it out. But give me a second. I'll get there. Oh, I just feel like everything is just moving today, right? 
Look, everything is moving. I can't, all this side noise. So stress is a, 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 a contributor to the building of contentment. Sin and selfishness. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Let me show you what it looks like, right? You're at work. And you're meeting at, you're at the water cooler. And you have this really fine coworker happens to walk at the water cooler at the same time. You guys engaging in a conversation and you guys get really close. All right. And now you in not, not you know, after a while, you guys are starting to go to lunch together. You know, seemingly innocent, right? Nothing's happening, but you're getting closer to this other person that's not your spouse. And then you start you start realizing, or maybe you don't realize it, but what starts to happen is you start looking at your spouse way differently because you're no longer going to your spouse for that kind of interaction, you're going to your coworker. So now you're pulling away from your spouse. The love is growing cold there because you have allowed yourself to get closer to somebody that you should not be getting close to at work or in the community or wherever. Then contentment starts to grow. And then it leads to you guys meeting up in a hotel after hours, lying about having to work overtime so that you guys can do what you should not be doing as people working together or as non-married couples. Then it starts to breed content in the marriage. Now you're not looking at your spouse like your spouse anymore. Now you're looking at your spouse like the person that's blocking you from getting with the person that you really want to be with temporarily, even though you don't know. That is the worst situation you can ever be in. Any person that's willing to be your side piece ever right? May not be the, the right person to be married to. Now, you guys got to consider all of that, right? Everybody goes through certain things and some people need certain things, but you got to be, be considered because we hear countless stories of, uh, of wives leaving their husbands for another man, right? And after a while, they wind up getting a divorce and it's a vicious cycle, a vicious cycle, right? Got to be careful. We got to be very careful on, on how we approach relationships with the opposite sex because it will breed contempt with our spouses. We got to be careful with that. That's sin. And the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So this is not me judging. This is me giving. Think of me right now as like a prophet that's not really a prophet. I'm giving you a warning. Doing those things in your marriage will breed contempt and will hurt your marriage. This is one of those clauses, those prophetic clauses. If you do this, then this will happen. Back off. Chill. Do not allow sin to creep in. Ben Crandall, uh, my, the, the president of Zion Bible Institute when I went to Bible college, used to always preach a message and would bring up the this analogy about sin, right? Where, what's going on, Corey Joe? Glad you're here. A sin about, sin starts off like a little egg. And you don't really know what that egg is. And then it finally hatches. And then you realize, oh my gosh, it's a snake. But it's not like a huge snake. It's like a little snake. So you're like, oh, this little snake can't do no harm. So you let it go. You leave it alone, right? It's like, it's significant. Then it starts to grow. And you start seeing it, it's like, okay, it's manageable. Right. It's big. It's longer, but it's manageable. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to hurt me or harm me anyway. So I'm just going to keep and it keeps growing and growing and growing until it becomes a boa constrictor. And you think, OK, I am close with this sin. I'm close with the snake. It's not going to do anything for me. You, you find that it's getting closer to you and, ro and, and, and roaming around you. What you don't realize is that it's sizing you up so that it can squeeze you and then swallow you whole. That's why it's important to nip sin in the bud, especially as a married couple, so that it doesn't breed contempt in your marriage and cause you to be pulled away from your spouse. Am I talking to somebody here? Because am I talking? I feel like a preacher. Who am I talking to somebody here? <laughs> right? And selfishness. Well, is my, my wife preaching? But she's, she's printing right now while I'm on live. I got a printer right here. You guys can hear that. 
Either way, she got she got to do what she got to do. Selfishness is another thing that will breed contempt. Your needs over your spouse's needs. And it's always going to be your needs over your spouse's needs. You want this, you want this, you want this. And you expect your spouse to do those things. But when your spouse has needs and you know that your spouse has needs and you refuse to meet those needs, you're being selfish. You've already established your contempt for your husband. And you know what's going to, or your wife. And you know what's going to happen? You not meeting their needs will start to breed contempt in them toward you. And then you're going to be like, I don't feel love no more. You used to do those things for me. Their response is going to be, well, it wasn't being reciprocated. I was being treated like a doormat. You have contempt toward me. And truth be told, once one, one spouse starts growing contempt for one, for the other, the other one will start growing contempt for that person. It's unfortunate, but it happens. It happens. Hold on one second. I'm going to shoot a quick text. It happens. And the goal is to have successful marriages. Okay? To have successful marriage. And again, when the couple starts having contempt toward one another, it's a good indicator that divorce is closely to follow. Another thing is unrealistic expectations that helps breed contempt in a marriage. A lot of that has to do with the social media culture we live in today because we watch these curated couples have these amazing marriages on Instagram and on Facebook, but they're struggling. For crying out loud, Tia Mari and her husband, Corey Hardrick, ha, yeah, Cor Corey, yeah, was on a, 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 a black marriage show and they were going through issues. A little over a year after they, that, that show went live, she announced that she was leaving him and getting a divorce. Perfectly curated couple online, on TV, getting a divorce. Hashtag couple goals. And here's the thing. You guys fall for the hype so much that many of you women out there were celebrating this, celebrating this divorce, because now you're thinking, okay, I can do the very same thing and be straight because you're so dependent on the celebrities you follow on social media. I say this in love. That's sheepish behavior. Sheepish behavior. If you're going to be a sheep, if you're going to be a follower, why don't you be a, a sheep for the great shepherd? Why not be a sheep for Jesus? Why not follow him and his ways? Because truth be told, his ways, his ways will set you up for success in almost every area, if not every area of your life. But you being sheep for people like Tiamari, for Beyonce, for Jay-Z, for Denzel, even Denzel Washington, who I respect, Steve Hall, whoever, being sheep for them isn't going to help you necessarily have a, a, an enriching relationship unless they're modeling what Christ has access to model in our relationships with each other. Not a popular take, is it? But we got to stop being sheep unless we're following the great shepherd. That's a bar. So your unrealistic expectations, you seeing all your, your, your Instagram friends doing all these great things with their spouses and you don't know what's happening behind the camera. Have your own relationship. Develop your, build your own marriage. That's what you should do. Build your own marriage and stop trying to have somebody else's marriage. Stop having, ha trying to have somebody else's wife. Stop trying to have somebody else's husband. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's spouse or wife or husband or married life. I just put that in. That's not, that's not in the Ten Commandments. I just did that. Don't covet. You can admire. You can see some things that you can say, you know what? I want to implement that. But a lot of times, all you want is what you see. Why aren't we, why aren't we looking at character traits of husbands and wives and saying, I want to mimic that character trait for my spouse? Why not? 
Why aren't we doing anything like that? Why are we, we, we want, we want to be on a boat in the Greek Isles with our spouse, as you ladies say, with somebody's son, which is hypocritical because if a man says that, it's really creepy, really creepy. Yeah, I want that. How about looking at a wife who's been married for 50 years? And say, how does she asking yourself, how does she treat her husband? How does she behave in the marriage? How, why does her grandchildren adore her so much? I want to mimic those traits. A husband who is a great provider, who's retired, who's living his life and, and, and loving his wife, living his life. I'm going to put that on the shirt. Living my life and loving my wife. I'm putting that on the shirt. But, but why, why aren't we going to men like that and saying, I want to mimic this specific trait? I don't care about the car you drive. I want to know how are you treating your spouse and your kids? We focus so much on the aesthetics, on, we, on the makeup people are wearing, instead of who the person really is. Unrealistic expectations. They curate their lives so that people can follow them. You follow them. You want that. And it's all fake. All fake. Stop looking at social media for what you need to expect in a relationship. Look to the word of God, which we're going to get into in a minute. And time pressures is another indicator. If you're not spending enough time with your spouse, they are not going to want to be with you eventually. Or... They'll find somebody else to fill that time and space with, which I don't condone. Do not condone. And here's some solutions for it. This is one of the best things any married couples can do. This is one of the things I first tell couples when I'm doing premarital counseling. Develop a vision for your marriage. What do you want your marriage to look like? And I'm not talking about aesthetics. I don't, I went a couple of this up. Well, you know, I want us to live in a big house. No, no, no. We're not talking about all that external stuff between you two, the husband and wife. What do you want your marriage to look like? What do you want your marriage to be? What's your vision for this marriage? Well, I want my husband to be able to do things for me and take me here and take me there. No, 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 no. You want your husband to grow content for you? Expect him to provide you a soft life. Because he may just do that to get you out of his hair. Leave me alone. I married you. I got I to gotta stick this out. Here's some money. G get out of my space. I'm about to go do something else. Develop an actual vision for your marriage where both of you guys, both of you guys are reciprocating love, mutual relationship within the marriage. Another thing. Respond and avoid reacting to each other. Which is hard to do, especially in the black community. We're so quick to react to something, right? Always so quick to rah rah and act ratchet. <laughs> Shout out to Lecrae. Got to act ratchet. <laughs> right? Listen, we have to stop reacting to things and start responding to things. Which is why I respect Mr. Jason Wilson so much. He 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 has a whole lesson on on, on YouTube. Watch videos of him teaching boys how to respond to situations and not reacting to them. Responding will allow you to make proper decisions in the midst of a conflict. Reacting will make you make a, make, make a, 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 a move or an action that will later lead you to regret it. All right? Which is why, this is, now this is for my brothers out there, which is why we need to respond to pretty women and not react to pretty women. Because you reacting to pretty women is causing you to, to have to engage with her for the rest of your life because you have gotten her pregnant. Instead of responding and saying, you are beautiful, but I need to make the right decisions right now. And right now, this is not where I need to be. Right now, getting into this may result in me having a child with you and being tied to you for the next for the rest of our lives because we share a child together. And that's not what I want because you are not my wife. Respond. Stop leading with lust because every time you, you react, you're leading with lust. 
sin, selfishness. But even in situations with your spouse to help avoid contentment, respond to your spouse. Try to understand your spouse. Even if they, 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 they are irate and very disrespectful, respond to them. Don't react, but respond. Or take a break, take some space until they are willing to speak to you in a respectful way. That's responding. If you know that you are hot right now and you are about to explode, don't react, respond. What's going on, Valerie? Great seeing you the other day, you and your sister. Respond. This avoids all kinds of insane situations in the home. It avoids almost all kinds of DV that may happen in the house. You guys know what DV is. Respond. And when you respond, it'll allow you to make a decision to stay in love with the person in trying to fix a conflict that's happening. Because conflicts will happen in every relationship. In every marriage, it will happen. But avoid reacting to situations and start responding to situations, especially in your marriage. Another thing, another solution, find an older couple to help mentor you guys. That's a great tool to have. An older married couple who have a great relationship. Now even, and this is one of those things where I say, as I told you guys earlier, and it's going to sound hypocritical, not to covet. Uh, when I say that, I'm saying not to covet somebody's marriage that is extremely selfish and carefully curated on social media. I'm saying, I'm not saying not to find an older couple that you guys can learn from and, and be mentored by to have a strong marriage, especially if they have um, a strong marriage themselves. <laughs> yes, Antarctica, right? Temporary pleasure can lead to a lifetime of regret and pain. Very true, Brother Chavis. Very true. Okay. Another thing that will help you guys in the, in avoiding contempt, and that's using restraint when you're engaged in a conflict. We love our spouses, but yet we're so willing to hit below the belt. We love our spouses, but we're so quick to make them feel belittled and demeaned in a, in a conflict. You know what restraint would help with? Allowing for your spouse to leave the conflict with their dignity intact. That's what it does. If your spouse can leave a conflict with their dignity intact and the conflict is solved, there's no room for contempt to grow. You know what's going to happen? They'll grow deeper in love with you. Because you guys had a moment of friction. It got hot for a hot second. And it melded you guys closer together. Which is why I, I, I don't mind conflict in every situation. Because if it's done correctly, it'll bring people closer together. Use restraint when you're engaging in conflict. Okay? And lastly, pray to the creator of marriage. God instituted and created marriage for a purpose. That purpose was for families to be developed so that those families can develop communities and that so those communities can develop societies. Marriage is the bedrock of all of it. It's the bedrock. You can't name me one strong civilization, right? Especially today, one strong community that doesn't have marriage as the bedrock of it. And if you can prove me wrong, please prove me wrong. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't. It's not really a debate. You can share some examples. But it would be hard-pressed to find any. Because marriage is important. Marriage is ordained by... Marriage is an institution that, that, that transcends culture. It transcends time. And although with modern-day thought, People want to do away with the traditional marriage or the sense of traditional marriage. Understand that God is never changing. God established marriage for a specific purpose. That purpose should be fulfilled. 
to build families so that those families can build communities so that those communities can develop civilizations. Okay? Let's get into some scripture if you guys don't mind. Ephesians 5, 22 through, 20, through 33 says this. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, which is one of those things that women don't want to do. It's one of those curse words, submit. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Now, as the church submits to Christ, so also wives submit in everything to their husbands. And that submission comes with a clause as well. Okay? Wives, women, if you're vetting your husband's or your if you're vetting your husband, if you vetted your husband properly, then you would know that he's willing to do everything between 25 and 33. Therefore, you're able to submit to him. Because if he's not willing to be what Paul writes down in Ephesians 25 through 33, then you can it's going to be difficult to, to, to submit to him. But if he's willing to do those things, it's going to be easier to submit to him because he's proven himself. He's proven himself. So yes, biblically, you're expected to submit to your husbands. But that's minute in response to the obligation and responsibilities that the husband has for you. A woman is expected biblically to submit to their husbands. The husband is expected to die for his wife. Which one's heavier? Submitting to or dying for? Perspective. Perspective. Y'all think submission is oppressive. <laughs> like, you really you really think, biblically, the Bible's saying that women are, are oppressed and because they got to submit to their husbands. For crying out loud, imagine being told you have to die for your wife. Oppression sounds more like convenience. Sounds more like that soft life you guys want. Verse 25 says this. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Now, so I have this highlighted because this I read a lot to remind me of what I need to be doing as a husband. A lot of us read the scripture and we try to read it to see what other people should be doing for us. What if we flip that and start reading the Bible to determine what we should be doing for other people? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of the word, water with word, with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Does that sound oppressive to you? No one has ever hated, no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it. That's not oppressive. He's told to nourish his body, his wife, pretty much, because that is part of him. And cherish it, just as Christ did the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each of you Love his wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Doing this, you so wives doing what this scripture says and husbands doing what this scripture says will help eliminate contentment in the marriage. What's going on, CP the artist? Glad you're here. It will help eliminate contentment in the marriage. This will help lead you guys in the right direction. But understand this, ladies. This scripture right here, this passage, specific passage, weighs heavily on the man. So that very scripture that, that people like to quote about submission and men like to quote about submission, some of the, us men are misquoting that scripture because before we can expect a woman to submit to us, we got to be willing to do all of this for her. And wives, women, if you found a man willing to do all of this, the least you can do is submit to his leadership. I mean, come on. 
No, no, not doing that. A, 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 a husband willing to do all those things for you and you not biblically returning or reciprocating what you should be doing is going to breed contempt in him. And slowly and surely, you're going to start seeing some of these things crossing off and him not doing these things. Why? Because you're not reciprocating it. It's not because he, 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 because some of you guys say, well, he should be doing it anyway, just like you should be doing it anyway. But after a while, we're human beings, we're flawed people. If anybody finds that they're doing and doing and doing for people, and those people are not doing for them, they're going to pull back. They're going to start breeding contempt for that person. And we're trying to eliminate contempt from your marriage today. Today. I have one more scripture to show you guys, and then we're going to close. First Peter 3, 1 through 7 reads, Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband, so that even if some do not obey the word, they may be one without a word by the conduct of their wives. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, do not let your adorning be external. Hashtag couples goals on their curated Instagram accounts. The braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry and the clothing you wear. See, all that stuff tells me this, that, that, that the Bible does not support the soft life that these people want, these women want. The braiding of the hair and the putting on of gold jewelry and, and the, the clothing you wear. But let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves by submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, and you are her children. If you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening, then likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way, showing, showing honor to the woman as a weaker vessel, since they are heirs with you. Okay? Showing honor as the weaker vessel, which is not necessarily like, you know, a, a bad thing. It's like more of a, a vessel needing to be cherished, like Ephesians talked about, nourished and cherished, like a weaker vessel, like a more fragile, a more... um careful vessel, right? More um, prized possession. Since they are heirs with you, meaning they are heirs with you in Christ, gentlemen, of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered. There are expectations for both. And if you guys follow those examples in Ephesians and 1 Peter, you guys are putting yourselves in a situation where you're eliminating contempt in a marriage or if there was contempt, you're trying to eliminate it altogether. And sometimes you need a coach. And I say, hit me up. Go coaching uh, coachingbydre.com and book a session so that we can have a discussion and process this. As I do a shameless plug. I don't know why I'm doing a shameless plug. <laughs> right? Contempt, as Jordan Peterson said, is a good indicator of foretelling of people who are likely to get divorced. And if you have contempt in your marriage, if you have contempt for your spouse right now, now is the time to do the work necessary so that you can save your marriage. The goal is to have successful marriages. And you, you can transform your marriage today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, everybody who watched live with me and who watched the replay. If you made it this far, please hit the like button right now. Okay? It'll let YouTube know that this is a video worth sharing. And it'll allow people who need to watch content like this to have access to it on their home screens and hopefully click on it. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit the subscribe button right now. Hit the bell notification next to it so it lets you know when I upload new videos, when I go live like I'm doing right now. And I'm trying to get to 10K. I've been stuck in 7,000 subscribers in that middle for a while. I'm trying to get to 10K. Help your brother get to 10K by his birthday on December 10th. Share me out. And if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, subscribe today, right now. 
whenever you're watching this, all right? And if you want to support the channel, there's a couple of ways you can do so. Again, if you hit the super chat button or the super thanks button, you are sponsoring this episode. So by hitting the super chat or the super thanks button, for those who are watching the replay, you'll be the sponsor of tonight's episode or today's show. Or you can go to um, patreon.com forward slash Harrison Family Values or hit the membership button down below. I think it's on the side. Down below. And uh, pick one of the inexpensive tiers that will help you support us monthly. It won't break the bank. Then we have some tiers as low as $2 a month. So that will help us keep this channel going and it will help you support uh, content just like mine. Also, for those of you guys that don't like giving free money, if you're going to give money, you want to get something in return. How about picking up some merch? Go to the channel, the, the store section of the, my channel and pick up some merch. We got some dope mugs, uh, canteens, uh, water canteens. Get your head out the gutter, guys. Water canteens, shirts, hoodies. The weather's going to start getting colder. Fall is around the corner. You guys are going to need some good hoodies to keep you nice and warm. All right. To go apple picking in. Pick up a, <laughs> pick up a hoodie the shirt and support the channel that way and doing that will help you support the channel financially and you get something in return so it's not like you giving free money to dre you know you get something in return all right so please consider that and um yeah, that's it so guys thank you guys so much for watching also also if you are in a situation where you think you need to speak to somebody about your marriage because either you you, you have a good marriage but you think it could get better um you're like right there at the the um the, the fence and you're not sure if you want to take the marriage to the next step or, or dissolve the marriage hit me up and uh if you are just in need of a marriage tune up hit me up okay we got programs for almost every uh type of couple out there that we could help and and get you guys to the place of having a successful and sustainable marriage all right uh yeah and that's it so go to coachingbydre.com and book a session with me today thank you guys so much for watching i appreciate you all and until the next upload live stream, I'm out. Peace.